Hello everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to the final episode of Let's Game Maker, A Binding of Isaac Clone. Well, I say it's the final episode, I might do a little specials if any of you guys want to suggest any game mechanics or features uh, you'd like to see coded in. But otherwise, let's get started with our final boss monster. So, um, our boss is going to be this. Um, and he's going to shoot poo in a circle from his eyeball. Um, and he's going to summon like zombies too. Um, you know, because no one ever expects the poo firing zombie spawn in eyeball, right? Um, so, anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this chap fire his poo in a circle. Um, so I've put a link in the description for the sprite. Um, or you can just choose your own, that, that'll be fine as well. Um, so... Now turn the boss and the poo into. Now we're going to turn the boss and the poo into an object. Um, so after you've added these sprites here, um, we're going to create the object. So I've I've pre-done all this just so I can show you. Um, so let's have a look. So in the create event, we're going to set his x scale and y scale. I've done that just because I felt like it was a little a little bit too big. Um, we're going to give him 300 health, and we're going to use like the player. We're going to use this firing variable to check whether we can fire or not. And the global poo direction is going to be obviously the direction of the poo. <laughs> and the spawn zombies falls, and this is going to just check if we can summon a zombie. So into the step event, we're going to randomize it and we're going to sort out the collision with the tier. So, you know, whenever the tier hits it, we're going to take away some HP. Um, this is how we fire, as you've seen this code a couple of times now, so I won't go over it in this episode. Um, so if the zombie is false, then it's going to have a spawn chance, so between 0 and 10. Um, and then we'll set the alarm and we'll say zombie is true. Um, and obviously we've got the death event here. So let's have a look at the firing event first, and then we'll go into the zombie spawning. So if you go to alarm 0... This is going to be the um, the poo shooting, <laughs> so it's going to create all the all the poo on his X and Y, so right in like on his eye, um, and then it's going to get the nearest poo, which is obviously the one that spawned first, and it's going to add thirty to the direction each time, um, and then we've just put with nearest poo because we want to control it, and we're sorting out the direction here, so it's going to equal this this direction. And we're going to fire at a speed of 5. And then we're going to set fire to false so we can shoot another one. Now if we go into the alarm event, we have this. Now, this could be better done, I think, maybe using like an array system. But I've done this to keep it really simple for so that everyone can um, understand what's going on. So the spawn chance, if you if you remember in the step event, the I set the spawn chance as a number between 0 and 10. So 10 being the max. And we're saying if it's six or above, which I think I think gives us a forty percent chance. So if you count in zero, um, I guess it'll give give us a fifty percent chance. But whatever. Um, and we are um, gonna sort out a random location. So it's either gonna be to the um, the boss's um, left, or it's gonna be to the right, or it's gonna be up or down. Um, and then obviously we just create it, and then we we do it again so it can try to summon another. So that's your boss done. Now we just need the collisions with the player. So let's do that. We'll open up the player and we're going to go to the step event. And we're going to. Let's have a look. Where did I put it? Um, yeah, just down here. Um, we're going to say if we hit the boss, then we're going to bounce away. And if we get hit by the poo, then. <laughs> We're just going to take away one HP. We're not going to get bounced back because there's loads of it, and it's um, it probably make it even harder than it already is. Um, so that's all you need in the player, just from there to there, and that will that'll do the job. And if we go to the zombie, um, I'm making the um, the poo um, delete as it hits the zombie, and not. Obviously, not take away or do anything, but I just wanted it to delete so that you can use them as like obstacles, sort of thing. You know, so you can like duck behind them. Um, so I thought that was maybe a good idea to to do. So that is that. Now, if we go into the um, the um, poo object itself, we're just going to say 
I've, I've again I've changed the image the image scale to that just because um, it was a little bit too big. And in the step event, we're just saying if it collides with the room, then destroy it. So that's pretty much all the collisions done. Um, and now we're going to sort out the generation and stuff. But first, something you can do is if you create a, a parent door object, um, we don't have to have any code in it, but just create a parent door object. And now make all the doors have that parent object, right? Because what you can do, um, if you remember our mob room, just to tidy the code up a bit, um, is you can say, when we come to locking it, you can just say, with pa parent doors, then lock it like that. Instead of having all the doors um, separated, um, if you just do it like that, then it just shortens the code a bit, and yeah, it just looks a bit neater. So I've, I've done that. Anyway, if we go into our generate rooms code, and, oh, no, there's no changes in the crate, and just don't mind any of this, you don't need that, that was just me playing with arrays. Um, but if you go into the step event, and uh, th there's a few changes in here. Um, so I've added the room generate plus plus down here at the bottom um, of the generation because um, sometimes I've noticed if you add it at the bottom, it can just act really weirdly. You know, like if you used to instead of putting it in here in each one, if you used to put it down here. Um, it, it could act really weirdly sometimes, so I've just made sure that you see. And the reason it do that is because if it couldn't place the room like that, say that that wasn't true, and it couldn't place the room, then it would still add to the room's generate down here. So it would just it just acts really weirdly. Um, anyway, I've just put at the bottom. We've put if gen equals false. So now if if we finish generating all the rooms. And instance does not exist, so if the boss room doesn't exist, then we're going to place it. And at this point, the Gen X and the Gen Y will be the very last room. Um, I mean, I tinker around with putting this code in here, but um, it's just more reliable down here, to be honest. And th th that was the whole reason I created this variable in the first place, this Gen false, so that we could be a bit flexible in the future. So, so yeah, just put that down there, and that is the generate rooms code done. So if we go into the um, the boss room itself, this is how it's gonna sort of spawn. So we're gonna say create. We're just gonna say spawn equals false, um, and we're saying if distance to the object is less than four hundred pixels and spawned is false, then we'll just create it. And now now it has spawned. Um, we're saying if instance exists object boss, and then we're gonna lock the doors. So if the distance to the object object boss is 5000 so from the middle of the room obviously again that's overkill um, you don't need to have it that large I just did then the doors are going to lock and yeah that is pretty much everything apart from oh sorry there was one more change in object zombie which I almost forgot um, something I've done is you see um, the pet parent enemy I've just given that to the boss as well. I've just made the parent enemy that so that we can actually dodge it. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So let's um, let's just test it out, make sure it's working. And then we can pretty much just finish up. So um so yeah I think this is as pretty much as far as I want to take this series. Um, it's gotten to the point where the project's getting just a little bit big, um, and it's not that well coded, honestly. Like it's it's not very neat. Um, I mean, the, it's just that like all the code works, and that's that's fine. But I've not done it in a very neat way, have I? So, um, but it doesn't matter. It was just to um, get people into the basics, actually. Um, and I, th I think I may have taken it just a little bit too far. Um, but anyway. Here's the the boss monster spawning zombies, and <laughs> it's it, it's quite high, it's quite difficult. Um, I, I tinkered around with the health actually, and had it at 500 like previously, and that was oh god, we've got a zombie there spazzing out on him. Um, the, it's because um, I've made the boss 
um, like the collision on him to um, to a precise um, collision. Now it's I don't normally do that actually, but because of the way that um, the boss is, um, like obviously you can see the legs. Like if you was to do um, a rectangle, an automatic rectangle, then it's it's just got loads of it. Like even if you was to do manual and just drag it yourself, then look how much it has to collide with. Like um, you know, like the legs are really thin, aren't they? So I've just left it on precise um, because it, it works. Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much it for this um, for this series, guys. Um, I mean, if you want me to do any more, then feel free to just let me know. Um, if you've got any suggestions for things you'd like to see programmed into it, then I don't really mind doing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time with a new series. So yeah, I'll catch you later, guys.